Hello comrades, so today we're going to learn how to make coroutines. Coroutines are very important and you will use them a lot in your coding. And here is what it is. Technically it's a function that allows you to put a delay on your code execution. So let's see how do we create a coroutine. We create it as a function with return type i enumerator. That's basically it for declaration. And here's our basic coro1. Basically it's the same uh, X modifier, return type, name, then parameters. And what it does, it waits uh, for one frame. Yield return null basically returns null from this function, but technically it just waits for one frame. So that was the most basic example, and without it, you can't really run this coroutine because it requires you to return something. That's one way. To return stuff. Let's look at the second example, currently with parameters. So same structure here, we just add parameters, int parameter 1 and int parameter 2. We first print the parameter 1, then we do yield return new wait for seconds and send as a parameter 2f. What it does, it waits for 2 seconds before it proceeds to this line. So we printed this then we wait for two seconds, and only after that we print this. Yep, so if you want to, for example, do some sequencing, like you print different texts, and you want to say, you win, then in one second, one million, and another second, dollars, then you will do uh, debug log, you win, you'll return new wait for seconds, one F as a parameter, then one million, then the same thing with waiting for seconds and dollars. All right, let's go to a bit more complex example. So public i enumerator basic coro. Let's create some variables here. So i equals two and b equals three. What we can also do, and I show it here, we can wait for other coroutine to finish. So yield return start coroutine and then you pass a coroutine and you pass parameters to this coroutine that you need. So if you want to start a coroutine, you can start it as a function. Uh, you can't just write basic core 2 You have to write start coroutine and pass the coroutine as a function more or less. So what it will do, it will start this basic core 2 with i and b, which is 2 and 3. It will print 2 in parameter 1. Then it will wait for 2 seconds. Then it will print b, which is parameter 2. Then it will return here. And only after just 2 seconds and printing everything here, it will start uh, doing this operation. So here we have in c the new variable, which will be equal i plus b, so 2 plus 3, 5. Then we wait for 2 other seconds and print c. So the whole flow will be like this print i, which we passed, then wait for two seconds, print b, that we passed, then wait for two seconds more, and print c. Okay, so here is inside this coroutine another example of what you can do. So I created here while loop, and it waits for condition true, which means that it will always execute this loop no matter what. So once you started it, there is no way out naturally because this condition is always true. Don't use it in uh, regular functions, use it in coroutines and you have to put some delay. Uh, that way you have something like a second alternative update. It's uh, not like I'm encouraging you to use it, I'm just wanting to show you that you can. All right, so what I do here, I increase C by I. So this c plus equals i is the same as c equals c plus i. So new value for c will be equal old value for c plus i. So new value for c will be equal to old value plus c, uh, old value of c plus i. All right, and here are three things that are basically the same. Wait for end of the frame, it waits until the frame is done. Yield return null does exactly the same thing. 
and wait for seconds zero. So if you wait for zero seconds, it just waits for another frame. So technically, altogether, we have waited for three frames, then we print C. And the way we break out of this loop and out of this coroutine is by doing yield break. So we check if C is big enough, so it's equal, or if it's greater than 100, because it increases all the time by 2, so at some point it will be greater than 100. And we do yield break. Yield break breaks out of the coroutine. If you use regular just break not without yield, it will break out of while loop. So that's the way to stop this infinite loop from inside. All right, so here is the basic introduction. Let's do some additional examples. So here is how you can make a cooldown for your weapon, for example. So what we do, we have method shoot and we have a coroutine cooldown. So we do check if player pressed the left mouse button, we do it by checking if input of get mouse button down of button zero, which is the index for left mouse button. We check it every frame because we do it in update. Update is a function that executes every frame and it's part of mono behavior. So everything that uh, depends on mono behavior uh, can have update which will be executed every frame so every frame we check if the button was pressed if the button was pressed this frame then we call the method shoot and here we check if we can shoot so by default uh, i created a boolean can shoot and initialize it to true so from the beginning player can shoot then if he can uh, what we do, we print pew pew and we print the name of what the player shot. So we have a list of targets here and I want to take a random target out of this. Yeah, it's not real shooting, I know, but I'm just trying to show some uh, features that you might use for your future games. So you can see that I have this pee pee papa Pepe, Poo Poo and Popo, which uh, is our variables. And we have a list here, targets. So I just assigned to this list, this PP, Papa, Pepe, Poo Poo and Popo, whatever. And what I do, I use a random index from zero to the count of how many targets are in the list. And zero so the first is inclusive which means it will actually include uh, zero into this random selection but targets count is exclusive so the second parameter is exclusive and that means that it will do targets count minus one more or less but not targets count so if targets count is five the maximum number that you can get from this random range is four so it will be from zero to four if the count is five and we get a name because it's a game object and game object has a name so we will print pew pew plus the name of one of the objects selected randomly once we shoot and when we did shoot we start a coroutine of our cooldown so you do start coroutine and then you pass a coroutine there what it does it disables shooting so it says can shoot to false which means that when we actually click the mouse button and go to shoot, can shoot will be false and it will not go here. Then we wait for, sorry, one second. And after one second, we allow it to shoot again. So if you click the mouse button during this one second, nothing will happen because the can shoot will be false and the weapon will be on cooldown. But once you press can shoot after one second, it will be true and it will just shoot once and start the cooldown again. All right. So another thing that you can do, you can save your coroutine. So you can see here we created a variable coroutine, cooldown coroutine. What you can do, you can say cooldown coroutine equals 
start coroutine cooldown. So whenever you start a coroutine, it returns an instance of this coroutine so you can save it. And you can save it just for example, so if uh, you press right uh, mouse button, which is I believe one, uh, then you can stop coroutine cooldown coroutine. So you, let's say, pressed mouse button left one, you shoot, your cooldown started, then you can immediately press right mouse button and it will stop the coroutine. And we have to also set can shoot to true here. So it will not execute this anymore, it will just set can shoot to true immediately. So whenever you stop the coroutine, it will immediately stop. So you stuck here, you stop, and you never go here. All right, so let's see how it works in actual editor. All right, let's clear these errors. That's from other code. All right, so I click left mouse, and it selected an object. And as you can see, I can click as many times as I want, but it only actually print stuff every second but if I click left and right all the time then it can print more often because it stops the cooldown and it resets it immediately all right and that was all I wanted to say about coroutines it's a pretty basic concept so you will get used to it really fast uh, it's pretty easy to use and you will use it a lot so have a great day and see you in the next video.